Hello. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for saying hi. Oh my gosh. Are you already like kind of going nuts? Cause I think I am. <laughs> okay. I think you have a pretty good view of the painting, but let me see if I can adjust this just a little bit. Oh my gosh. Are you doing any painting today? I feel like I should play some music. Let me let me take a second and get that going. All right, is that obnoxiously loud or is the volume good? I have it about, it's pretty darn low on my computer, so. Okay. Can you actually hear me okay from all the way back here? I have my mic pretty far away.
working on the porch today and thought it would be cool to do a live stream so that we can all hang out while we are desperately quarantined. I'm gonna put a link so if you swipe up you can come hang out.
I just... One of my favorite tips is to take photos of the painting and then put that into Photoshop. So um, that way I can really quickly swap back and forth between the differences in my piece and what I'm working toward and just see what the inaccuracies are. Obviously, it's never going to be one-to-one -one because I'm not going for photorealism here, but I find that it saves me a whole lot of time. so you could be in the stream. Okay. Hopefully my cat decides to hang out with us. Jawline was like pretty accurate. It just needed a slight adjustment, so that should help there. One thing I'm trying to work on in my paintings generally is I tend to not have a hard time seeing things in pretty high chroma. Um, but the downside to that is that I sometimes take that overboard. So Just trying to figure out how I can tone down those shadows just a little bit. By the way, can you all hear me okay? I know it's probably not super loud, but hopefully audible. So far my chat is very, very quiet, so I'm just going to talk to myself unless someone says something. Or you guys just can't hear me, in which case I'm talking to myself and then no one's saying anything, and yeah, like never-ending cycle of doom. Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. Jordan. Fine. 
it's remarkable how close Italy certainly got to me all of a sudden. Also, in case you can't tell, there's a really, really long delay. Um, so, just know that I do see your chat, just remarkably late. What are you all up to today? She probably won't be any more interesting than that for a while, so we'll just we'll just paint. Can you guys actually hear me? Hey Carlos, good to see your good to see your name pop up. Um, okay, so this is absolutely not from memory. Um, this is from a photo reference. Um, this is a painting of a child, and oh yay, I'm glad you can hear me. Um, and there, she could barely sit still enough for me to get like a photo of her in the right pose. So. Um, there really wasn't even an option of me doing preliminary sketches. Um, so I do have a photo, it's sitting on my computer. Um, that's why I keep glancing back over here, that and to just chat with you guys. Um, and I'm, I'm just constantly looking back and forth. So um, I can even, let's see. You can see like over to the right, I have my like Photoshop thing and this is me just kind of tabbing back and forth between um, the actual photo and then like a photo I took of the painting. Um, it's just like really easy to see what's going wrong um, when I do it that way. And for client pieces like this, I really don't, um, you know, I just, I want to make sure that everything is like 100% perfectly accurate. So helps out a ton. <laughs> also, I just realized I said all of that like really far away from my microphone, so if you need to repeat any of that, I am happy to do it. All right. So, this is usually just a matter of like, seeing what jumps out at me first. So I do have an area with like a slight drawing problem. Um, over here by her jaw, it's just like a little bit. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Um, thank you for hanging out and chatting with me and like asking cool questions. When I started streaming, there was no one here, and I was like, okay, do I, do I talk to myself, or, <laughs> like, the, the playback on this stream for, like, half an hour, the first half hour will be, uh, very boring if anyone chooses to rewatch this. Um, that's okay, because, like, hopefully we'll get to the good stuff, and then people will want to be watching, so... 
Okay, so I'm like pretty happy with her eye area generally. Like not like it's done, but like there are no drawing problems on it, which is my first concern. Um, and that's honestly like still what's being corrected right now. Um, cause I definitely don't want to like put all this effort into rendering or, um, you know, whatever the case may be just to realize like, oh, I need to like shift the entire left side of her face in. Um, there's just no way to get around a whole bunch of repainting if that happens. So. My brush is right behind you guys, so I apologize, like, reaching over my webcam constantly. Um, hopefully I'll kind of figure out a better way to do this, because, like, honestly, I want to keep streaming. Like, I think we're all going to be stuck inside quite a bit for a long time, and I don't know about you guys, but um, it's going to start to drive me crazy after not a lot of time, so definitely want to just like create any opportunity to hang out and feel a little bit more social. So what are you guys all up to today? Like, are you stuck home? Are you kind of trying to go out and do errands while you still can? How's it, how's it going? I'm already like a super duper homebody with my studio being in my home and just kind of generally being a hermit. Um, But that being said, like, I can already, I don't know, it's stressful, it's stressful, and it sucks not being able to, like, hang out with friends and just kind of go about our normal routines, so I hope you all are doing okay and aren't too anxious about everything. One thing that's not really well defined on my painting, or I guess it is defined, but it's just so hard to see that it might as well not be, is um, the edge of her forehead. And in the photo I have, she has hair that's just beyond it, which helps kind of create an outline. So it's hard for me to see how accurate my existing painting is. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and like put in that darker shape and then I'll probably check it here shortly. No, Ugh, I hear you on the Netflix binge, Carlos. I, I think I just finished like an entire season of Anne with an E, which, um, I love the book and think it's delightful and hadn't read it in ages. Um, honestly, didn't like the idea of someone like readapting it because the old movies are so nice. Um, but yeah, it's hard not to like watch a ton of Netflix right now. Like, even when there's things I could be doing, I don't know, I feel like everyone's just super anxious right now, and sometimes when you're anxious, the only thing you can do is <laughs> just sit down and, like, watch TV. Oh, 
Oh cool. What um like what kind of t-shirt painting do you do? So, her nostril I painted way too dark, like, the color was good, just the value was totally wrong, and it meant that I'm just not going to get the same subtlety as I was seeing in my reference, so the paint was like a little thick, and the color I'm going to put over top of it is somewhat translucent, um, so to allow that new brush stroke to actually show up, um, I just had to scrape away the old paint and now I'm going to mix up the right color. I think this is a good bit lighter. This is a combination of two colors. This is permanent rose and permanent magenta. And that seems quite a bit better, like all the way around. And one of the pretty things about my photo is that there's this place where like the light is sort of refracting and like blending in with her skin color, um, like right at the edge. So I'm trying to kind of demonstrate that. I'm painting a little bit larger than it should be to that end. Um, and then I'm gonna go back with my skin color and blend back into it um, and that will make the shape correct. Oh that's really cool. I've never tried t-shirt painting but it sounds like just a sort of soothing nice activity and then like you have a new shirt. And I'm really glad you like the idea of the stream. I, I'm honestly surprised like a ton of people aren't doing this. Um, so I hope a lot of people decide to just kind of come and hang out because it just, it gets really lonely and I definitely know that like, like I work a lot. I love painting, um, but this past week it was just so hard to get things done because it was just so bleak. So I really like the idea of like coming on here and being able to work and hang out with you guys and hopefully it helps all of you too because um, I know it's helping me. I feel like the more I look at that nostril, the more I'm like, I kind of took a thing with a problem and like kind of fixed it and then kind of created another problem. So now I want to see if I can kind of match this surrounding color, which I think is mostly yellow ochre and like uh, a little bit of terra rosa and maybe some permanent rose. I can tell it's like several transparent things all kind of on top of one another, so. I'm just like putting my loaded brush over top of it to see uh, if the color looks right. Um, and if it doesn't, I don't even need to bother like trying it. I can just go ahead and redo it. 
Okay, so this is kind of the part where I was talking about like painting back in. I'm just letting like the flesh color blend with the shadow color here. And that's gonna like really soften the whole effect. And I don't know, like when you get like really, really extra on those kinds of details, like nostrils, it can look really unflattering really quickly, even if like you're being pretty faithful to your subject. So I definitely wanna make sure that this is looking nice and subdued and all that other good stuff. Top tip. You can't hear me. Oh no, why can't you hear me? an idea as far as being able to hear. Test. Okay. Alright, so my microphone's working. It's very far away from me relative to how it's designed, which is probably the primary issue. All right, I'm gonna turn the gain up on my amp here. Is this a little bit better? It should be. All right. Trying to adjust. Um, trying to adjust music and then my microphone simultaneously. But this should work. It, looks like you're receiving audio and the levels are okay, so just tell me how it's going, or tell me in the chat, that works too. Okay. Kind of like the idea of <laughs> you all like being able to watch me paint in real time because you can see how incredibly slow it is compared to all the time lapse videos that just look really satisfyingly fast. I said earlier, what I'm really focusing on here is primarily correcting drawing problems. Um, obviously, like I am working in color, but if I can feel really confident that everything is in exactly the right place, it's actually easy enough for me to even like paint over whole sections.
Okay, I'm just gonna talk, and let me know like if you can hear anything, or if it's just really quiet, or if there's just no sounds whatsoever. Um, Hopefully, in case no one can hear me. Um, <laughs> uh, I went ahead and just typed just in case. Alright. Okay, cool. I'm going to turn up my mic quite a bit and see if that helps. Otherwise, I'm going to try and move it closer to my face. I just don't have, I don't actually have like a place to rest the microphone that's like decently close to me. Um, so I'm having to kind of compensate with technology. Okay, is this any better? The microphone's like maybe a foot closer to me. And I'm also going to turn up the levels on my amp just in case that also helps. You know, it worked, and if it did, I'll resume painting, and if not, I will keep trying to uh, fix this problem. Okay, okay, I'm glad that's helping. <laughs> oh, I wonder how much time it's gonna take before I run out and buy a mic stand. All right, okay, how about this? This should be like pretty darn loud. It looks like it from the levels, but I don't wanna actually try and listen to myself on the feedback to um or um yeah i don't want to like turn on volume on the stream because you'll get like horrific feedback um but it looks like this should be okay let me see what it Yay! Okay, I'm so glad it's good. Um, so excited. You guys, I want you to see my super janky, like, I want to show you where my microphone is because I don't have a mic stand. Oh, gosh. All right. So, that. That right there is my microphone. I'm literally propping it up. Hold on on my brush stand because <laughs> it's like the closest thing I can get to my face. <laughs> okay, back to painting. Yay, I'm so glad you can hear. Thank you all of you for, I don't know, just like telling me what's up, helping me out. I probably should have said this was a test stream. I did like a little mini one last night, but didn't share the link with anyone. Um, 
just looked at playback to see like if everything was working and if the quality looks good and stuff. So there's definitely a lot of a lot of room to learn. And of course, I threw a brush on the ground. All right. Okay, so I'm just looking, looking back over at my reference again. And yeah, I mean, same as before, I'm really just looking for like, what is the most distracting thing to me? Um, and at this stage, there's not a ton, like, if I kind of zoom out and I start looking at her dress and like the chair she's sitting in, sure. Um, but I'm gonna feel really good when her face is in a good place and I'll feel that momentum and it's gonna be a lot easier for me to um, kind of just dive into the rest, which actually makes up a lot of real estate, but because it's less important, I think it's just gonna be easy to like dive in confidently as soon as I know that the portrait itself um, looks really nice. I have students who ask me a lot, like, how I keep so clean and why I don't, like, wear an apron and how I keep clean without wearing an apron. Uh, the secret is to, like, wipe your hands and wipe your brushes often. And then I don't take... Dirty brushes don't get on my hands and my hands touch something else and then suddenly there's paint everywhere. Okay. All right. Um, I really want to look over in here. Um, I left out some like somewhat important information before. So it's just a little bit like visually ambiguous, like all this light area actually is not how it looks in the photo at all. You're actually seeing like more shadow in her neck over here. Um, and as you can see, I'm not being like super literal about painting it. Um, it's not really about like creating a high degree of finish, it's more how well does it read when I squint and then I can continue to refine it and make it look good as I go. Okay. So I have a feeling that this was just a little bit too much. Like I took it a little bit too far. I also bet that it's not quite the right color, but just wanted to touch that and make a very slight adjustment while I was thinking about it. So for those who have watched my other videos, do you guys have any, like, I don't know, just anything any questions that kind of come up from the other videos that you wish I had addressed by now that I can maybe talk to today in the stream or in an upcoming video?
So I find I'm having like a lot of trouble with this eye on the far side. Like it, it reads well when I squint at it. So like overall it's working, but there's some detail that means that when I focus on it, it looks like really wrong. Um, so what I want to be careful of when I try and address that is not to undo what's working. Um, and most often what actually needs to happen is very, very slight. People be texting me when they should just hang out with me on the stream. <laughs> All right. Guys, the chat is so quiet. I can definitely narrate, but I'm afraid it's like super repetitive. So you tell me what you want to talk about. So generally speaking, what I tell my students is that we want to be thinking large shapes to small, um, which means what I'm about to do is really quite pointless. I'm about to put in a detail that is far too small. Um, the reason I'm doing it, I mean, this is not like a great reason. But I really just want kind of a landmark for this detail. Like I want to see if it, I think it's actually in the right place and it's going to read as being in the right place. Um, but chances are I will have to paint over this for one reason or another. So it's not light enough. One thing to note when painting anything on the eyes, um, highlights are rarely white. A lot of the time they're blue. Similarly, just because we think of the eye as being one color doesn't mean it's going to look best if it's painted that color. Like, not like change someone's eye color, but, um, a lot of times you can have someone who doesn't have brown eyes, but you put them in the in certain lighting and it's going to look like they have brown eyes. And if you force them to look blue, it's going to look really unnatural. So it's always, especially with like identifying traits with eye color, um, for commission work, it's like a really interesting balance of okay, how, how do I make sure that the client feels like this is a representation of this person? Um, and balancing that with like what's going to look really naturalistic and nice.
I have no idea what that like delightful sound was. It sounded important. Oh well. Yvonne Peterson from my Facebook group just said that she was going to watch later tonight and I really hope she gets through all the silent parts <laughs> to see, I don't know, the places where I'm actually painting or narrating. Um, so for later when you get to watch it, hi Yvonne, I hope everything went well with building your fence. It's certainly a pretty day for it. Okay, so this is normal, like, this is a good point for me to go ahead and take a new picture. I think if I had, like, a tablet or something with my photo, like, literally right next to it, I wouldn't need to do this. Um, because it would just be easy enough to see what the differences are with them next to one another, but... It's just a little bit challenging with the current setup, so let's see if you can actually kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, okay. So my first thing is I want to take a photo that doesn't have any weird parallax, like you're not viewing it at an angle, which distorts the image, and then I'm just trimming it down so that it should be like the exact dimensions of my photo in Photoshop. So I just like airdrop it to myself and open it up over here. My poor, poor computer. It's working so hard. <laughs> Hello! I don't know what I should call you, VG, but thank you for tuning into the stream. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. Let me know if you have any questions about what I am doing, because it's much nicer to feel like I'm having a conversation than I'm talking to myself like a crazy person. So I'm just like overlaying my photo of the painting into the original photo in Photoshop. Okay, awesome. So I can already see that like the updated jawline right here is pretty much the right drawing. And what's sort of interesting is that now when I look at my reference, um, that's no longer jumping out at me and the thing next to it is now jumping out at me which means i've done a good job um, of fixing that problem that's exactly the way my process is supposed to work i take the thing that's like most distracting fix it and then what should happen if i was successful is the next most distracting thing kind of makes itself apparent to me um okay so I, I see like a couple things that I want to fix here. And I'm really just going in order of like 
what I think I can confidently do. Yeah, so um, so I'm going to make a full video with the time lapse of me creating this painting. Um, it probably will not include footage from today um, because the camera I used to film is the camera that I'm using to live stream right now. Um, so you will get to see the full like start to finish, this is what it looked like. And you'll be able to kind of jump back to the stream here if you want to see... Um, you know, review the parts that probably don't make it into that video. Um, but yes, so just to kind of like walk you through how I got to this point, um, this started with a wash that's like, I don't know, maybe one of these two colors, like just this really, really pale neutral green. That was the entire canvas. I then like wiped away with a little bit of mineral spirits like the general shape of her face because I know that these colors are super super pure and I didn't want the green interacting with the pink of her skin tone so um, I wiped that out I masked in like a very simple um, skin tone color and then went about kind of mark or massing in the shadow shapes so it probably would have looked like this sort of triangle of the eye would have been like a singular shadow shape that probably would have been about this color um then you sort of have like a triangle for the other eye that also suggests the nose and then i would have had this kind of interesting like weird zigzag from the point of her nose down to her chin where you can see these shadow shapes are going in and out. So you have like a shadow shape that's the entire inside of the nose, goes down to the cupid's bow, um, light is hitting the very top of her lip, then this entire upper lip is in shadow because it's pointed downward. Um, so that got included and then there's like a zigzag through the bottom lip, then going right under the lip sagging back to the point of the chin and then it ties in with the jawline um so that's how the really early parts of this came in and then you can see what it probably would have looked like because everything like the way her chair and her dress and her hands and arm like all of that is masked in the way that her face started in the block in so um yeah, after that initial, like, just getting the basic drawing down, that's the point at which I first start, like, really checking to see, okay, is this drawing accurate? Um, and I try and get it as accurate as possible, as quickly as possible, so that I can confidently, like, layer in more color. Um, and that's basically where we're at now. I'm not really having to make a lot of adjustments to to the actual like drawing component of her face at this point um it's very slight it's like noticing like oh like the fold of her nose is like maybe two millimeters off and i need to like push that in um so like over here is going to get kind of pushed this way a little bit so is this portion of her jaw i already moved that in a little bit and need to see if that's good enough or if that's you know if i need a little bit more um and I'm trying to think about the big picture still because there's still like quite a lot for me to do. Um, but I mean, uh, if you were able to kind of see what I'm doing over on my computer, like I'm kind of zoomed into her whole face and I just sort of go from section to section. So I noticed that the top of her head um, that aspect of the drawing was wrong so I cut the background in to try and redefine that and then 
The next thing I'm noticing here is that in my reference, um, the shadow in her jaw like rounds up into her cheek. Um, so the next thing for me to do is to go ahead and mix up that kind of transition color. And I'm gonna think about applying it in a really flat way and then it, it'll get blended sort of as I, as I go. Um, I'm not very concerned with the idea of blending. Um, I think it, I think the more you think about it, the more trouble you can sometimes get into. Um, so if you start with like really bold graphic shapes with really strong edges, chances are they're going to selectively soften and look more natural as you develop the painting. Okay. Thank you for that question. Thank you for giving me something to, uh, to talk about here. So the color I'm mixing is a little bit complicated. I, I can't see exactly what it's gonna look like very well. I know it needs to kind of seamlessly match this shadow in her jaw, but it's not nearly as dark. It's much closer to what we have up here in her cheek. And this paint happens to be dry, so I can't really rely on like it mixing or interacting with that at all. Um, so I'm taking like a really long time to mix and get like really certain about what I'm doing before I decide to put anything down. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. Let's see what it looks like. All right, this is a really, really dry mixture, so I think I'm just gonna think of it in terms of a dry brush. When I was learning to paint portraits, one thing I was told is that children and women are the most challenging subjects because everything is round and soft in their features. Um, and it, it can just be really easy when you're painting to go too hard, um, which gives them a really aged look. Um, for that reason, men are usually considered more approachable subjects for painting, um, and especially more mature men who definitely have like really hard lines on their faces. It's just, it's a little bit easier to understand and mimic as a painter. Um, so right now I'm being like a little tentative with what I'm doing because, um, she really shouldn't have any hard lines on her face. Um, and I'm having sort of strike a balance between being decisive and painterly and not wanting to make something on uh, excuse me unflattering or like sacrifice the likeness so If you just joined the stream or you haven't answered this question yet, what um, what are you up to? What are you doing to kind of keep yourself busy and entertained as we kind of all go into some form of quarantine? I know I at least am going to be just kind of cooped up here in the studio for a while. A while.
It's funny. I think like when I watch the playback on the time lapses, it kind of unfolds like so. It feels so organic when you watch the time lapse playback um, that I don't see the things that I'm really conscious of right now as you watch me in real time, where like I am ping ponging around between all kinds of different places on this painting. Um, And that's basically because as soon as I'm not seeing decisively what should happen next, I'm trying to move on and paint something I am certain about. Um, so in a way it makes sense. In another way, I kind of wonder if, uh, if I need to work on my attention span a little bit. And a lot of times I see something, I kind of go over to my like brushes to grab the brush I want to use to paint it, or I go to my palette to mix the specific color and kind of lose track of what I wanted to do. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of kind of remembering like, oh yeah, I saw like this thing where the color shifts right here on the bridge of her nose and it's going to read a lot better if I introduce, you know, these kind of cool neutrals in there um so that's one thing I'm doing right now By the way, I kind of just like quickly Googled stream music, <laughs> um, realizing that it was just really weird sitting here in silence. Um, if there is specific music you think kind of matches the mood of a painting stream or just if you have any requests, let me know because um, what I think I'm going to do is host a stream like every day that we're in quarantine unless I genuinely need a day off of painting altogether um, or I'm doing something like teaching a lesson or something um, client meetings that kind of thing um, and yeah so I want to like make a stream that you enjoy and that kind of helps you get work done and it's nice and relaxing so let me know what you would like. These sections are really difficult because they're just there are no hard edges. too much okay so right there I know the paint under what I just put down is dry to touch so I'm just taking a little bit of mineral spirits and like erasing that out rather than like painting over it um, I think what I already had was pretty good I would rather kind of have that down there as a reference for me to go forward rather than trying to replicate it all right this kind of kills me, but this nice little highlight I made is just not in the right place. How it goes, this is, this is why you don't put in detail when it's too early. Um, this is not straight white. 
this is a lot of white put into my skin tone mixture, which is mostly Terra Rosa. Uh, might have a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Okay, so that placement's a little bit better. Now, of course, the whole thing looks very wide. So I'm just taking the flesh color here and going back in. I don't know how people stream all day. Like, I really, really like the idea of it. And I'm already like, you know what I would love right now? A nap. I guess we're gonna, we're gonna find out how they do it. Oftentimes I pull a brush for a really specific reason and then go to use it and have no idea what I wanted to do with it. So I kind of have to make a decision here. I painted this like, it's not a dimple, but it's like where the corner of your mouth goes into your cheeks. It's really expressive. It's basically like the main indicator of whether someone is smiling. It's not really about like the shape of their lips. It's about what the shadow shape looks like here. And I've painted it in this kind of C curve. It's like backwards C. Um, and in the photo it goes the other way and I truly don't know which one is going to look more flattering I have a feeling if I stay more faithful to my reference um, the better off it's gonna be so Next thing I want to do, this highlight on her cheek is very cool, um, and it's it goes down much lower on her face, um, and the reference, so I'm just making that adjustment. I'm 
And this is like kind of subdued mixture with like terra rosa, probably some permanent rose or permanent magenta. Um, there's a lot of white in it, but it is not white. There are places that I see could like use this color, but I'm trying to be judicious in where I apply it because for instance, like down here, you might consider a shadow or at least like relatively in shadow. A um, little bit of the same thing up here. And this is so light that I can kind of make my painting sort of confusing looking if I introduce too much brightness into those areas that are supposed to be relatively dark. All right, so I talked earlier about how I like reintroduced this little piece of hair to try and like better establish where the edge of her head was. Um, and thankfully that was really helpful. Um, so I'm just... Gonna take that new information and correct that shape a little bit. I was talking earlier about how like this eye has been really challenging for me and what's interesting is that I expect that this adjustment will help that. Would you guys like to be a little bit more zoomed in on the painting itself? I don't know exactly how close I can get, but... Oh, that's really nice, me just like totally being in the way of the camera. Yeah. To do a couple things here. Okay, that should be a little bit less prone to me blocking the camera and it should get you in much closer to the painting. You see how it looks when I full screen that image. Pretty good. Okay. Oh, thank you to everyone who liked this. Yay! I'm glad that's helpful. Um, yeah, I just realized, like, I don't know how you guys are seeing anything. Um, I know some artists who, like, put GoPros on them, but I imagine that would be really like overwhelming to look at uh, okay so here's a part where i just want to i don't want to like be putting paint on the panel for the sake of like painting um so i'm really just focusing on looking and trying to answer the question of like what actually needs to be done? What, what can I be sure of? What's working? I saw like another adjustment that I could make in her 
jaw area, so that was really helpful. So besides like hanging out with me on my live stream, um, what all are you guys gonna do to kind of keep keep busy during uh, this time where we're all encouraged to like stay inside and not interact with other people? I think I'm probably going to hopefully like spend a good amount of time outside gardening. Um, obviously like not outside in public places, but just outside to like get some exercise and like be in nature and not like lose my mind cooped up at home or cooped up inside I should say. from that though I don't know probably like watch a whole lot of Netflix is there some great social activity that I should be considering or I guess not a social activity yes oh I agree on cleaning the house we could do all of our spring cleaning it'll just be done and then when this like passes we can just enjoy our beautiful haven I'm selling a couple things on like Facebook marketplace right now and um, I'm a little bit bummed because people have like asked me if they can come see stuff and I totally want to like find new homes for things but I'm like I don't know if it's a good idea if we should be <laughs> interacting but yeah, I'd love to do some like serious Marie condoing of a lot of stuff in my house, actually. I just want to live in an empty house. <laughs> an empty house with like a couple really comfortable pieces of furniture and an easel. That's it. That, that sounds pretty great to me. I got this paintbrush and literally do not know why I up oh, I remembered why I grabbed it now look at that look at that and I know what I'm gonna do after I make this adjustment that I'm making too so there's like really interesting shadow that connects her nostril with like the underside of her nose um, and I didn't really notice it until just now. I'm probably going to have to like do some weird adjusting um, so it doesn't look confusing. But this is still like the beginning of this painting. So I would rather see this like larger shadow relationship than get really literal about like outlining like, oh no, this is the edge of the nostril and this is where like the fold of her nostril is. Um, I'm really okay kind of letting all those things run together right now, knowing that it's going to be, it's going to work in some places and in other places, like, okay, I'll just go and define it later. It's not a huge deal. Totally. I would love to send out some kind of reference. This painting is actually a commission. So I'm not sure that I should send out like this specific picture, 
but maybe um maybe tomorrow we can like work on um a non-commissioned piece and i can send out what i'm using for that totally um okay i want to catch up on the chat here Yay, I'm glad that things will calm down and you can get back to painting. That's awesome. I'm hope I hope that um I hope that this is a nice substitute in the meantime. Um Do you think it's like crazy that UK isn't closing schools? I know like in the county that I live in everything is closed except like the public schools in the county I live in and people are really angry about it <laughs> um, and a lot of people are holding their kids back um, even though like school is happening because they just think it's dangerous not not even for the kids but just um, the rationale that the county used was that like the children of hospital staff and healthcare workers go to these schools and they need to like give healthcare workers every opportunity to be able to go into work. Um, but the kind of prevailing reaction to that is that, okay, what happens when they're the healthcare workers kids get sick and then they have to come home at the end of the school day and then we have doctors and nurses getting sick. Um, so I truly don't know what's going to happen there. A lot of people are still waiting to see if like really late Sunday night or Monday morning, they're going to reverse that. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I can't imagine how stressful that must be for, for parents. So earlier I totally said that I knew what I was going to use this brush for after I made that adjustment and then promptly forgot, but that's okay because I remembered. Look at that. So I'm working like a little bit slower than usual because I'm talking, but at the same time, it's not that much slower. So I just think it's kind of interesting because it gives you an idea of like, even though you see these, you know, 10 minute time lapses that I put out, there's so much like, so much starting and stopping and remember what I was doing and just staring at it and... A lot, a lot of time winds up going into every video, not even because of like producing the video, but just because I have to get a lot of painting done to be able to like have content to share. funny I stopped watching Anne of Green Gables to come and stream so that I could like feel productive <laughs> and I so badly just want to like put Anne of Green Gables back on and just sit in front of the TV um it's gonna be a really long few weeks <laughs> I hope we all adjust and it winds up not being a huge deal I know exactly like I I'm in this dance class right and it's like every six weeks there's like a new series and you just kind of buy the package of the dance series and I messaged the group um oh like last night or the night before and I was like so hey is there a chance that we're postponing the next series um because that was it was like the day after like everything started getting canceled, like all sporting events and universities were closing and everything here. And so like the instructor sent out a poll to see if people would prefer to postpone it or if they wanted to go ahead and dance anyway. And 
one of like the young people in the group was saying like do, do we want to really put like living our lives on hold like it's just and someone responded saying that they they had an autoimmune condition and it was really dangerous for someone to be incubating the virus and not know that they're gonna get sick and like come and infect her and it it kind of makes me mad when like young people especially kind of have the attitude of like I don't know, I, I guess just kind of being entitled. Um, and being frustrated that they can't do everything and that people are taking such precautions because, um, yeah, I, I have a lot of friends um, who themselves have health conditions or they have loved ones with health conditions and, um, I'm like I can't imagine how scared they are because I'm scared enough to like hang out with them and you know what if I found out a week later that I had been carrying it and then they get sick and then they pass it on to their loved one I just think that's like so extremely scary um, and I'm I'm grateful that so many people are expressing this concern and wanting to keep as many people as they can safe but at the same time there are so many people who clearly don't get it um and it's just it's i understand <laughs> i understand how you can be so worried because yeah it's it's really scary that people would treat it that way um and i hope that I don't know, all, all of the people I know who are at risk and your family as well, I, I hope everyone stays really healthy and strong and that this doesn't, that this doesn't go on for a long time. Hopefully, like, we're flattening the curve, which slows it down, which I guess would make us think it's going to take forever, but at the same time, I think it means the faster that happens, the faster we get back to normal in like a weird way. I don't know if that was articulate at all, but I hope it kind of made sense. <laughs> Just thinking about the difference between me, like scripting out my videos to make sure I sound articulate and me trying to talk right now. <laughs> oh gosh, I hope it's uh, still, I don't know. I hope it's still nice. I hope it's still keeping you company, even if it's a little bit less polished <laughs> and intelligible. Um, so right now, I'm just... It's weird to like be really uptight about like the drawing of the hair because it's so arbitrary. I could kind of make her hair do just about anything and it would probably look nice. Um, but at the same time, I, I want to get it right and then adjust it unless I kind of do something by accident and I think like, wow, that looks perfect the way it is. Um, so I'm making these like kind of small adjustments to the way her hair is like falling across her eye because I have a feeling it's like contributing to how nice her eye looks. So even though I'm kind of covering up stuff I've already painted. Oh wow. It's going to have to come in a whole lot. Okay, that's the kind of brush stroke I probably should have been making this whole time. Just like super decisive, messy, not messy, but like I'm not worrying about blending this or softening it. I'm just putting some paint down. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, this is such a small price to pay for keeping the people in our lives healthy. Um, I don't really know what it's going to be like as far as like keeping the house stocked up with food. I like eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and stuff that's really hard to store. 
So I just kind of told myself I'm going to have to go out and grocery shop once a week, even if that's like the only thing I leave my house for. Um, and I assume they'll stay open, but I also like, uh, I don't know, it's scary and all that uncertainty is like quite scary. How are you, um, are you kind of dealing with that? Like, will you have to leave the house for stuff or are you, are you like a nuclear bunker in your home? Just one thing that's um. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll probably do some online shopping. Um Yeah, thankfully, like, the people I live with are all my age, and we're not particularly at risk, but at the same time, it's like, if we do get it, then we shouldn't venture back out to go get groceries again, so, um, yeah, we're definitely a household of Amazon and DoorDash and, like, every other conceivable delivery service, so I bet there's going to be a whole lot of that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you, it sounds like you have everything already set up. That's great. Are, how old are your kids? Or excuse me, kid, I think. Yes. Okay. Are, um, are they like mentally prepared for that or is it going to be like a meltdown of <laughs> not being able to hang out with friends? I feel like at 17 I would have been like perfectly good on house arrest, but I also had a lot of friends who I think would have had like a full blown meltdown. So I've already designed the background a good bit. Like it's meant to be pretty like abstract and painterly. Um, which means that even as I kind of like make these sort of scrubby marks, they're actually like 
fairly deliberate. I know where they are supposed to go and what they're supposed to look like. That was not the color of paint that I wanted to put down just there. Alright. Looks better. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely one of the like online chatting 24-7 kind of kids. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it sounds like it's probably pretty good that you got the arguments out of the way cuz I suspect I suspect they're inevitable, you know, it's it's such a big change. Yes, definitely. I I totally agree. I, it's interesting because I think it can be really hard. Like you know, I, I have nothing else to do on my calendar um, except get paintings done. Um, it's, I'm not going to be going to the gym. I'm not running errands. Um, that's it. <laughs> um, I'm not going out with friends or going on dates or anything. Like, anything we do is going to be, like, with my roommates. Um, and we're probably going to drive each other crazy anyway. So on the one hand, it's like... Yeah, like imagine all the painting I'm going to get done, but on the other, I think it's, it can be kind of overwhelming and it, it can be hard to be productive when you're stressed out. Um, and it's a really weird combination, like having so much time and also just being kind of too anxious to do anything with it. Um, I definitely had days this week where I got through the whole day and just hadn't done anything <laughs> um, and, and felt kind of icky. So I am, um, I hope the stream is helpful. I, I said this earlier, but I, I think it's definitely gonna help me kind of have something to do and feel like I'm with people and socializing and um, give me a reason not to just like binge watch a TV show anxiously um, and instead, you know, get some work done and be able to feel good about it and feel like Despite everything, things are kind of carrying on and I can feel normal. So I don't have any pieces in progress right now that I can share a reference for, but I think that means what's gonna happen is probably I think tomorrow I'll have a piece that um, I start and I kind of like rotate in. Um, so I probably will work on some commissions um, where I'm not going to share like the reference I took for the client. Um, but I'll take breaks from the commissions and like we can work on um, some like original pieces together where I can totally share, uh, yeah, share my references. I have. I've been taking a lot of my cat, Boomer, who, um, Boomer is lying down right now. She's taking a nap. Um, I was like really hoping she would take a nap in the little cat bed that I put beside me so that you guys could also hang out with her. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of Boomer photos and we could paint Boomer. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. It's, I think like the biggest thing for me is just the uncertainty and, you know, as a painter, like a lot of my business is done just from my studio and I don't necessarily have to have like in-person meetings. I, 
I can't imagine what it's like for like restaurant owners and places that people are being like actively told to avoid. That would be really, really scary. Um, yeah, and I hope that, I don't know, I was talking to um, a friend of mine yesterday and he was saying that he hopes this kind of helps push us forward in terms of like maybe more people being able to work from home or just kind of like structural systemic like efficiencies that we can improve and of course stuff with like making sure that people can get tested and all of that stuff. So yeah, hopefully hopefully the new normal leads to like a a better place that we all return to after uh, after it passes. Okay. So I'm just kind of looking to see what I want to do next. I'm avoiding like a lot of work in the shadows because for me it's really hard to see the color accurately. Um, I want like as much context around those colors as possible um, for me to kind of base my decisions on here. So I am avoiding them a little bit. I think it's probably close enough that I can start putting paint on and just kind of testing it out. I wholeheartedly agree. I, Carol, I, I really like the idea that this can help us reconnect with people and put more out there into the world, like give more to other people with things like painting and, and everything else. It's, I've definitely felt that, like taking the business full time. Um, like just how like gratified I am to be able to connect with so many more people. Um, I'm like definitely a homebody and selling my work has forced me to kind of step out and interact more than I would have otherwise. And it's been a real blessing. Um, and it's, it, it's almost like surprising to hear myself say how much I enjoy being able to like share all of this with other people, but it's definitely true. And a lot of the conversations I have with friends kind of comes down to trying to encourage them to have the same positivity and connection and creativity and find a way to channel that like for themselves, for, for other people. I agree with you on the paint hoarding, although that's literally the first time I thought to myself, like, oh man, I wonder if I should go to the art supply store now. <laughs> um, probably not great. Um, I feel for you as far as the, uh, the exhibitions. I have a lot of friends who had shows planned and, um, and are having to cancel things. Um, I suspect though, like once, once the threat passes, people are going to be really grateful to be able to go out and go to events and everything else. So it's, I wouldn't be surprised if you had a lot of people who want to come to your show, um, as soon as it can be rescheduled. And I have friends who are doing like online exhibitions and stuff like that too. It's just sort of a different a different way to approach it. Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to talk about my palette. I'm actually surprised that no one had asked before this point. Um, yeah, let me, I'm going to block in this little section here and then I'll take my camera 
off the tripod and show you um, all the colors I have and then we'll talk. Well, I can talk brushes now actually. Um, so on the brush front, everything I'm using is from Rosemary and Company. Um, as far as I have, or as far as I'm aware, all of the artists um, who have mentored me, uh, all of them use Rosemary at this point. I think that in other circles, there are a lot of artists who use different brands. Um, it just doesn't really happen to be like the circle that I'm in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some clean brushes um, and I'm going to make sure that you can see what I'm actually showing you here. So let's see, can I make this focus on me? I feel like a really bad like beauty YouTuber trying to do this right now. You can do it. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you back here. <laughs> um, so this is a Rosemary Eclipse Extra Long Comber. I have these in like just about every size, but my favorite sizes are, let's see. I really like this 3 8 inch. It's like one of the most versatile things for like, uh, I think this is a 12 by 16, but 11 by 14 panels or smaller. Um, this is a beautiful size for canvases at about that scale. Um, anything around 3 8 is also going to be helpful. As you can imagine, this is clean because this brush, this 3 quarter inch brush, is just like too large for just about anything I'm doing at this point. Um, this would have made sense for like the block in, but nothing else. Um, I love the combers. Um, I guess I can like talk to you guys here. <laughs> um, I love the combers because they make, if you really load your brush up, um, they make a really beautiful irregular mark um, that kind of looks like you're brushing with like a fine tooth comb. Um, I wonder if I have anything that like really is a good example of what that brush texture looks like. Uh, okay, if you like Daniel Key's work, his like signature look is because of these brushes, just that super wet, irregular look. Um, that being said, this brush is not used for every part of the painting, so block-ins. Um, these two brushes are really good for the block-ins. These are the um, Rosemary Evergreen Long Flat and the Rosemary Ivory, oh my gosh, Ivory Long Flat, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, these are really good in the beginning when you're trying to like make these really scumbly marks um, like for an abstracted background. Um, really good for just quickly laying paint in and getting a lot of different textures. Um, I don't like to use these past the block in though because I find that um, uh, in my experience they kind of encourage a bad habit which is putting too little paint on the brush and then pushing too hard. Um, the nice thing and also kind of the annoying thing about these combers um, is that they're so soft that you can't press hard. It just, nothing happens. Um, whereas you can push all the paint out of these brushes if you push hard, but it makes for a really muddy painting, I find. So these are just for the block in when I have paint that's like thinned down with mineral spirits. Um, I don't always use this next brush, but um, it is really helpful. This is a Rosemary Pure Sable Series 77. Um, there's another Sable Series that they have is the 56. Um, it's a little bit more like densely packed, so uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to show it on the other camera. Um, so you can see like this one is pretty thin. Um, and it's very floppy. I actually tend to prefer it, whereas this one is like very thick and like stiff. This is actually me like pressing on the canvas and nothing is happening. 
um, whereas this is the same pressure on the other brush. Um, I So yeah, this is the 56 and this is the 77. Um, they're really nice for kind of continuing that block in. It's gonna give you a really uniform stroke. Um, so not great for like anything where you want a lot of texture, but great for where you just wanna like really fill something with like really pretty flat shapes um, and get your painting off to a good start. Um, I do have a few um, Master's Choice. I'll show you over here. Um, this is, I think, like one of the more popular brushes Rosemary makes. Um, I don't use it for anything super specific. I think it's just that like, I really only have filberts in this brush. Everything else is usually like an extra long flat. Um, so anytime I really want a filbert, I just grab these guys. Um, and that's usually at the point where I'm using like the consistency of paint straight out of the tube. Um, and then same thing with the combers. So I'll use these kind of interchangeably once I'm no longer working with like a wash. Um, trying to think if there are any other brushes I should mention. I don't think so. I have like a couple of specialty brushes that are kind of variations of those, but it's like, I'll show you. Um, like I have a super eensy teensy brush that's just for detail work. Um, where are you? It's always so hard to find when it's in this big pile of dirty brushes. Okay, well I'm not gonna like bore you guys by making you, oh, found it, okay. So this is um, an ivory round. Um, I use this for literally just like the highlights in an eye or really, really thin line. Um, I don't have many other specialty brushes aside from that though. Um, there's like one that I sometimes use for a signature, um, which is this um, Eclipse Rigger. Um, it's just like a longer round brush, um, nice for like signing. Um, but I don't even use that every time, so go figure. Um, Awesome, okay. Um, thank you, Carol, for your comments because it tells me what I should talk to you about. <laughs> um, it's awesome that you studied with Daniel. That makes me really happy. Um, he is amazing and um, this whole time I've, you know, I'm making like this pretty tight portrait because um, this is a portrait of a child. It's a commission for a client. Um, I want that really high level of like finish, but sometimes I think that can kind of make me tend toward painting a little bit tighter than I want to and not having paint that's like quite as juicy. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of thinking about Daniel in the back of my head this whole time, like what would Daniel be doing? Um, but anyway. Um, okay, so the Comers. I definitely want to answer your question about the Comers because it's a really good question. Um, wondering if there's a place on this where I can demonstrate it really well. <sighs> really, okay, the way that I think you should use the comber is put a lot of paint on it and make sure the consistency is the way you like it. So if you need a little bit of oil in the paint, um, like if your paints have set up a little bit and they're a little bit stiff, this is definitely a brush where you want the consistency to be exactly the consistency that you like. Um, and then mix a whole lot. Um, I tend to find that I mix in these like shallow piles. Um, and what that means is the paint, I kind of have difficulty like getting a whole lot of paint on the brush after I'm done mixing and I'm going to put it on the canvas. Um, if you have that issue too, I would recommend mixing with a palette knife and then scooping that up with the brush because these brushes like are at their happiest I think when there is a lot of paint on them. Not like gobs, like not like something you can't control, but because they're so soft, um, you know, there are places on here where you can see like where my brush dragged. Um, 
this brush will 100% do that any time that, um, anytime that you don't have enough paint. So with that being said, um, like definitely experiment. If you have any of Daniel's videos, he does a really great job of showing like just how much paint he puts down. You do want to be careful that you don't put too much paint down too quickly so you don't have like a muddy painting that develops. Um, and that's part of why I like using these in the later stages so that I'm putting all of that thickness down toward the end when I already have quite a bit of control over what the painting looks like. Um, now, that being said, these are also really good brushes for like, let's say you have like a really beautiful, um, uh, a really beautiful stroke of paint here and a really beautiful stroke of paint here. So you have like the top of her head going into the background. Um, and maybe you want to like lose that edge or something. If you get a dry, clean um, comber, you can literally just like lightly drag it up and you're going to get some really beautiful effects that way. Um, so I think the two uses of this brush are like really distinct where you either want it loaded up with a lot of paint or you want it to be bone dry. And those two applications are like putting paint down um, and then the other application is blending. Um, and that way you aren't trying to think about blending as you're applying the paint, which I think is like an easy way to um, create a painting that's like a little bit less structurally sound. Um, not in terms of like the archival quality, but just like if you're doing too much blending from the get-go, you kind of lose your anatomy or you lose your drawing really quickly. Um, <laughs> yes, what would Daniel do? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. And so actually, all right. So one thing I am gonna do this month, I have a commission that I haven't started, which um, is like a huge floral bouquet. Um, so I can 100% photograph that and share it with you so that you can do your own versions. Um, I would love to have um, your company while I work on that too. Um, uh, so I think while I'm doing that, it's going to be a lot easier to channel that question of like, what would Daniel do? Um, hopefully we can kind of tackle that question together. Um, you had also asked about daggers. Um, I have exactly one dagger. Where is he? Uh -huh. He's like in the very back corner of my um, brush stand because I, I never use this. Um, I'm going to put this over here so you can kind of see what he looks like. This is um, not technically a dagger. It's an evergreen sword. Um, you should be able to like get a pretty good idea of his shape. I got this brush because I was sort of under the impression that it would encourage like a lot of different kind of marks. I have not, this brush has not taught me its secrets yet. Um, I pull this out when I really just need a mark that's going to surprise the pants off me. Um, <laughs> for me, that's usually like painting landscapes, um, like where I just, I, I really need a texture that doesn't feel artificial. Um, yes, definitely so happy to kind of spread the gospel of the Eclipse Comer. It's, um, I will say that brush frustrate, frustrated me for a really long time. Um, when I, part of the reason when I started talking, I talked about like the danger of these, um, these like faux bristle brushes, the ivory long flats. Um, it's because I had that habit too. I had the bad habit of like pressing really hard and not having enough paint and like creating a muddy painting with these really stiff brushes. Um, and then I think it was like a Casey Baugh video where I was introduced to the Master's Choice, which is like a much softer brush. And there was definitely like a pretty big learning curve there for me. Um, because I was trying to make the brush do something it didn't want to do. I was trying to make it make a beautiful mark with not enough paint on it and too much pressure. Um, and it wasn't until I could really kind of let go and let the brush show me what it wanted to do um, that I kind of got a handle on this. 
I would say the learning curve on the master's choice was kind of somewhere in the middle. Whereas like when I first got the Comers, oh man, I was mad all the time. Like I did not understand how these brushes worked or how Daniel like worked his voodoo with them. Um, Cause that's what it seemed like to me. It was like, how on earth does anyone make a painting with this, let alone a masterpiece? These are the most annoying painting or annoying paintings, annoying brushes in the world. Um, and it's just, I was just trying to make them do something that they didn't want to do. Um, so like the master's choice helped me mix a little bit more paint and get a little bit lighter. And then these required me to mix even more and get even softer with the way that I apply the paint. So, um, and what I mean by softer is literally just, I'm not like putting pressure. Similarly, like I'm not putting the, um, bristles like perpendicular to my canvas to paint with these I do a lot of like lay the brush flat and drag um, it's another way it really likes to be used so there was definitely like a lot to learn there and I think when um, when we start doing some flower paintings I'll like really be able to kind of show you what what's possible with this one um, and probably do a little bit more demonstrating as far as like here are the stupid ways in which I tried to use this that did not work, and here are the ways that I use it now, which is like actually how the brush wants to be used. Um, okay, then as far as palette, let me, um, I'm gonna take my camera off here. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of, kind of show you my setup real fast. Um, I have like an edge pro gear um, easel that's just like setting, sitting on my desktop right now. Um, and I have these two little like side attachments. So that's a bucket of Gamsol, um, a brush that's kind of out of place. I store all my dirty brushes over here. I know it's like horrifying, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just wash them all when I'm done rather than washing as I go. And then you can see the palette I've been mixing on. Um, it's pretty clean. Um, like the piles only go together when I deliberately want them to. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you? All right, colors. That's a horrifyingly dirty pile of um, Williamsburg titanium white. Then we have Rembrandt Cad Lemon Windsor Newton Cad Yellow Pale, Rembrandt Cad Yellow Deep, Rembrandt Cad Orange. Um, the kind of intermediary orange here is, I think, Michael Harding Cadmium Scarlet. Then Windsor Newton Cad Red. Um, that is not alizarin, that's permanent rose, and that is Windsor Newton. Um, then Windsor Newton Permanent Magenta. Um, then Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red and Transparent Oxide Brown, which I've totally obliterated and I need to put more brown out. Um, Terra Rosa, Windsor Newton. Um, this color beside Terra Rosa that's like mostly gone is um, Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Yellow. It's a color that I think I've only seen one artist use. I'm not... I feel a little bit guilty for using it because I'm like, if all these genius artists don't need this in their palette, then like... I shouldn't have it online, um, but I I like it for like underpaintings, like if I want it to be super yellow for whatever reason. Um, what can I say? Um, next to it is the actual color that people would use in this instance, which is just um, Windsor Newton Cad Yellow Pale. Um, that's one where the brand is very specific. Like, obviously I'm telling you the brand and the exact names of all these colors, but, um, yellow ochre, did I just say cad yellow a minute ago? I hope I didn't. Anyway, it's yellow ochre. Um, yellow ochre pale. Um, yellow ochre has a whole lot of variation, um, between brands and between, like, pale or just yellow ochre varieties, so... Um, you'll definitely want to get that specific color if you ever want to like duplicate this palette or if you're doing like a Zorn palette or something that's super limited. Um, 
Okay, next to that is um, Gamblin Green Gold or Rembrandt Transparent Yellow Green. Um, brand is interchangeable there. It just has a different name depending on the brand. Next to it is Rembrandt Viridian and then Rembrandt Ultramarine Blue Deep. Um, so the reason I have all of these, um, I mean basically because it's like Richard Schmidt's palette or Daniel Key's palette, the only exception is this transparent yellow oxide or oxide yellow color which is on neither of their palettes. I think it's on Casey Baugh's. Um, but the whole idea here is that it gives me the capability to if I swapped this out and had a flower painting up here, I could mix any color. Um, for this particular painting, I do not need all the CADs. Um, really, the majority of the colors I've used for this, um, aside from the titanium, are the permanent rose, permanent magenta, um, all three of the browns, so transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown, terra rosa, a little bit of... Um, the yellow ochre pale, viridian, and ultramarine blue. And like truth be told, uh, several of those are convenience colors. So um, obviously I, I probably could have mixed everything on here with just a four color palette if I really needed to. But um, my workflow involves like a lot of swapping between paintings. Um, so I like to just have the full palette on there whenever possible. Um, okay, let's see what the chat looks like. Okay, good. Doesn't sound like you guys have too many questions there. Oh, I'll, get, I'll definitely give it a second because I know that there's a pretty big delay between me talking and what you actually get to see. Oh no! I'm so sad you couldn't hear me. I think I was like talking too far away from my microphone. Um, I'm, although it also wouldn't surprise me if my internet were freaking out a little bit. Um, if there were sections of that that you missed, like specifically like sections of the palette or anything like that, let me know and I can kind of walk back through. Um, I have a PDF on my website that like shows the palette, but I'm not actually entirely sure. It might have been made before I swapped in the permanent rose and the permanent magenta. Um, at which point I would have had alizarin permanent instead of those two colors. Um, but yeah, whenever, um, whenever I kick off tomorrow, I'm also going to be, you know, giving you guys a look at my palette and um, can definitely answer any brush questions and stuff like that. Yay, I'm glad you can hear me. You can tell just how like intense the, the delay is probably between uh, between when you typed that and when I reacted to it, but oh well. All right. So we've been painting for a little while. I'm inclined to like probably cook some dinner. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think as far as like, how often would you like to have a stream going? Um, my thought is probably like make it as accessible as possible and basically anytime I come paint 
unless I just really need to focus on something and get something done for a client or something like that, um, I'll go ahead and turn the stream on. So like I might stream again later tonight or might just kind of like get some downtime. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm curious what, what you all think, what you'd like to do. Um, I think during like the work week, it's probably going to be like I wake up, have breakfast, and then like start up the stream and see who uh, who wants to hang out, and hopefully like get some painting done simultaneously. Cool. All right. I'm glad that that sounds good to you. Um, Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and probably, like, just cook some dinner, like, catch up on some emails. I have a couple of other commissions that I'm finalizing right now, so I'm, I actually need to check out um, some feedback from a client and see what changes I need to make. And if I paint again later, um, I'll start up a stream later. Otherwise, I'll probably uh, see you all tomorrow. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me. This was, like, a really fun first stream. I, I really appreciate you guys like bearing with me. Um, for anyone who was like here from the very beginning where there were lots of silent periods of me just kind of waiting for people to like hop in the chat and talk. <laughs> um, thank you for your patience. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's only going to get better and better. So thanks everybody. All right. I hope you all have very happy painting, a stress-free evening, good kickoff to our social distancing and all that good stuff. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.